Presidential campaigns in the United States are now a billion dollar affair, but over a couple of election cycles we've seen a real increase in the amount of money getting spent in politics in this country. So one of the things that's changed in recent years in terms of how elections are run and who is running elections is the rise of super PACs. Now, PACs have been with us for a long time and they're actually not particularly carefully defined. A political action committee is basically just an organization that spends money on elections and is not run by a candidate or by a party. But in recent years, there's been a development of a new kind of PAC, which is commonly called a super PAC. And the difference between them is that super PACs can um, engage in basically unlimited spending, uh, while PACs had limitations on how much they could raise and from whom and how much they could spend on a given candidate or party. So the difference is really remarkable. Um, you might think of a PAC as being like a faucet that got turned on and off regularly, while a super PAC was like a fire hose of money. Um, and so we've seen this really striking change in terms of where the money is coming from and who's giving the money uh, in just the years since super PACs became legal. So Citizens United, or Citizens United versus the FEC, is a 2010 Supreme Court decision uh, that fundamentally changed the rules about how campaigns could be run. In particular, the Supreme Court made it legal for uh, corporations and for unions to engage directly in uh, independent expenditures, uh, calling explicitly to elect or to oppose a candidate running for office. And this is something that uh, corporations and unions have not been allowed to do previously. So I think there are three main effects we need to remember when we're thinking about changes to campaign finance in recent years. First of all, there's been a real change in how much we know about the money that's going into our political system. As money has moved outside of the traditional channels, it means that it's not overseen in the ways that old kinds of spending were. So we don't even actually know where all the money's coming from or where all the money's going. And that means it can be very hard to tell what effect all of the spending is having on our politics and on our democracy as a whole. Another important thing about the changes in campaign finance is the power that it has given to individual wealthy people. So previously, if you had a billion dollars you wanted to spend, you would have to spend that uh, through a bunch of different organizations. You would have to give to parties, and you would have to give to candidates, and you would have to give to committees, and all of those expenditures were limited at quite low dollar amounts. And that meant you had to work with others. You had to uh, coordinate your activities with other people, and you couldn't just sort of um, finance an entire uh, election season out of your own pocket without consulting any other people who were engaged in the political process. So what you're seeing is a lot more independence on the part of very wealthy people who want to engage in politics. The final way that recent changes in campaign finance have really affected uh, American democracy is the extent to which it has created parties outside of the party. Now, we hear a lot of criticism of Americans, American political parties in this country, and some of that's justified, but the political parties have been, for generations, a place where different interests had to come together and negotiate, right? So if one person came to a political party as an environmentalist and another person came as a feminist, now they're in the same party and they have to find a way, even if they didn't particularly care about one another's issues, to work together to advance both of their goals. But to the, uh, to the extent that you move politics outside of the parties, those negotiations aren't happening in the way that they used to. The other thing that political parties did was give regular people a place in the political system that was actually quite powerful. And we see this every year with the campaign conventions, right? You see these delegates in the audience who are, you know, they're very politically engaged people, but they're not hugely wealthy people necessarily. And they're really making a difference, right? Because they are actually voting to select the candidates for office. And to the extent that money is moving outside the party, we're sort of draining away the influence of this place where there had been specific rules and specific opportunities for average Americans who really cared about the political system to participate. A lot of people want to uh, talk about campaign finance reform and it's a really important question because the money we're spending on politics is uh, absurd compared to the money getting spent in other countries and it's not obvious that we're getting better results in terms of candidates or effectiveness in Washington. Um, so this is a really important question. Unfortunately it's also a very difficult question uh, because Currently in the United States, income inequality is simply very high, which means some people have a lot of money, and money is power. And so the idea of how you create rules that limit the way that that power can get expressed in a democracy, these are really difficult questions to think about, and I think that it's something we're going to be grappling with for a long time. But the irony is, and I'm not sure that it's an upside, is that all of this campaign money that gets spent in these presidential elections, a lot of it, it's not obvious it's making a big difference. So. 
Political scientists have been searching for years for evidence that campaigns really matter. And in the aggregate, sometimes they do. But things like TV ads, things like um, negative campaigns, and a lot of the things that campaigns spend huge amounts of money on, political scientists don't really show them having much of an effect. So what we may be seeing is a process that's extremely costly, but not necessarily cost effective. In a presidential election, a ground game is one of the most important elements of the campaign. 